Welcome to your very first violin lesson. Congratulations on taking this huge step. I'm your instructor, Megan. I've been playing the violin for over 20 years. I have both my bachelor's and master's degrees in violin performance, and I've been teaching since 2014. In recent years, my specialty has evolved to teaching adult students. I've taught over 200 adult students and hold a thriving studio of adult learners, all of which I see online. If you're interested in learning more about lessons with me, you can click the link down in the description. And you can also check, my, check out my online violin academy if private lessons aren't something you're interested in or aren't something that's an option for you right now. But let's get into the lesson. This is the exact thing that I would do with you if you were my new one-on-one -on -one violin student. So the first thing that you need to learn is the parts of the violin. This is the chin rest. It's where we put our chin. This is the tailpiece, which houses the fine tuners. Mine only has one, but yours should ideally have four fine tuners, and these are used for tuning your instrument, making sure that your strings are at the right pitch so your notes sound correct. These are the F holes. That's where the sound comes out. This is the bridge. The vibrations from the strings go into the bridge, which go into the body of the violin, which produces the sound. These are the strings. We have four of them. The highest is E. The second highest is A. Next is D. And the lowest one is G. This is the fingerboard. It's where we put our fingers. These are the pegs. These are also used to tune but in larger intervals. Again, if you are a beginner, I do recommend having the fine tuners down here, but you may find that you have to use these pegs if one of your strings gets wildly out of tune. And this is the scroll. This is just the head decorative part of the violin. And this is a little bit embarrassing because I've been playing for over 20 years, but I didn't know this was called a scroll because it looks like an actual scroll until like a couple months ago. So now you know, now you're ahead of game. <laughs> This is the bow. This part of the bow down here is called the frog. This is the tip and this is the hair. It's important to be familiar with these parts in case that they are referenced in this lesson or any other lessons that you watch. The next thing we're going to do is learn how to hold the bow. So if you don't have yours around, go ahead and grab it, I'll wait. So your bow is going to be held in your right hand. I'm also going to put a, another video that I did on how to hold the bow, which is a little bit more in depth. So I want you to actually take your bow in your left hand and hold it out in front of you like this. Keep in mind that since this is mirrored, it's going to look opposite of me. So your frog should actually be on that side. Hold up your right hand like you're gonna give me a high five. High five. Bend your thumb and place your thumb on the outside of the frog on this metal part. Your thumb should be half on the hair and half on the metal part, and it should be bent. Now, bring your middle finger around the bow so that it's right across from your thumb. Place your middle, or sorry, your ring finger right next door. Pinky goes right on top, nice and curved. And your index finger is going to hug the bow, touching the bow between the first and second knuckles. I like to start out with students using their thumb on the outside of the bow because this is a little bit harder to control. But if you feel like you're ready for it, you can bring your thumb inside the bow directly on top of the frog. Again, making sure that it stays nice and bent. Shake your hand out and show me a good bow hold. Thumb, wherever you choose to put it, in or out. Middle finger right across. Ring finger right next door, pinky right on top, and index finger hugs the bow. It's so important to get this right from the very beginning so that you don't develop any bad habits and so you can produce a good sound. Now let's learn how to hold the violin. Go grab yours if you don't have it next to you. So before we do, I want to say a quick note about shoulder rest, which is this thing right here. I do recommend at least trying out a shoulder rest at first, and we hold the violin, this is a pretty unnatural position, right? So we want to try to be as comfortable as possible. And a part of that is keeping our shoulders level 
when we hold our instrument. If I take my shoulder rest off, you can see that there's quite a bit of space between my violin and my shoulder. So what happens is I compensate by doing that, and then my shoulder starts to hurt, my neck starts to hurt, and I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't need any more aches and pains. <laughs> so I do recommend using a shoulder rest. I will leave one link down below. And um, so that it takes up that space and your shoulders can remain level. So place your violin on your collarbone right here with the back part of it up on your shoulder like this, holding it with your left hand. Turn your head to the corner about 45 degrees and gently press down. You will feel a slight bit of tension, but just enough so that you can keep the violin in place and be able to hold it with no hands. Let's count to five, holding the violin with no hands. One, two, three, four, five. Good job. Now, let's learn how to bow. So place your violin up on your shoulder. You can use your left hand for a bit of support right here for now. Get your beautiful bow hold and place your bow around the lower half, which is close to the frog on the A string. Now we want our bow to be about halfway between the bridge and the fingerboard in order to get the best sound. Now we're going to draw a down bow, meaning my hand goes down towards the ground. And as you do so, push your hand out away from you so that the bow stays straight. You can see that my bow is still parallel to the bridge. Is yours? That pushing out or pushing away from you is very, very important because that's what keeps the bow straight. Now, as we perform an up bow, which is this way, we're going to bring the hand in. Again, just so our bow stays straight. My bow is still parallel to the bridge. Is yours? It's a good idea to practice these open strings for at least a couple days, probably more, to make sure that one, your bow, staying bow is staying straight, two, you're getting a good sound, three, you're maintaining a proper bow hold, and four, you're holding the violin in a relaxed position. So, you have just completed your very first violin lesson, congratulations. If, again, if you are interested in working with me further, I will leave that information down in the description. Let me know if you have any questions. Subscribe before you go, and thank you for watching.